Last weekend at Walter Reed Medical Center, President Trump received the highest degree of health care in the world, and it was on the taxpayer's dime. Upon discharge, he told Americans not to let the virus dominate you because, quote, we have the best medical equipment and the best medicines in the world. That tone-deaf statement didn't land with mo most folks, let alone the families of the 215,000 Americans who have died due to COVID-19. They don't have the luxury of being president, uh, getting a helicopter to fly them to one of the best hospitals in the world and give them a cocktail of medications that some people can't get. According to the New York Times, the treatment that the president received would have cost the average American at least $100,000 in medical expenses. That estimate is on the low side. Uh, that's paid for by taxes, by the way. That's, what we, that's how the government pays for stuff. Trump paid, as you know, $750 in income taxes in both 2016 and 2017. So he got a really good deal on this one, according to the New York Times. Meanwhile, he gets first-class care for himself using your hard-earned dollars. And while his administration is trying to dismantle the Affordable Care Act via the Supreme Court and working to end guaranteed health care and pre-existing conditions protections for millions, well, that's how it goes. With me now, Independent Senator Bernie Sanders of Vermont, also a former 2020 presidential candidate. Uh, Senator, good to see you. You tweeted, uh, Mr. Trump, guess what? The Walter Reed Hospital you were at, where you claimed you got excellent, high-quality care, that is a 100% government-funded, government-run, dare I say, socialist facility. Um, you and I know, uh, Senator Sanders, uh, where I come from in Canada, everybody gets the same health care uh, and everybody sit, pays the same for it. That's not the case in America, but it seems like Donald Trump made a really good case for universal health care the other day. You sure did, Ali. Look, I don't begrudge the president getting the best care that he can. But no, I do begrudge not. I do begrudge the reality that we got ninety million people in this country today, ninety million people who are uninsured or underinsured. Before the pandemic, we lost over sixty thousand people a year because they couldn't get to a doctor when they needed to go because they were uninsured or underinsured. I am talking to you now. 50 miles away from the Canadian border. And as you've just indicated, somehow in Canada, for decades, they have managed to provide quality care to every man, woman, and child. You're in the hospital for two months, you come out, there is zero bill, and yet they spend one half per capita as to what we spend on healthcare. What Trump's illness and treatment tell us is that healthcare is a human right, it's not a job benefit, Everybody, rich, poor, young, old, is entitled to health care. In my view, your Medicare for all single-payer program. And that idea is gaining more and more momentum every day, especially because of this pandemic. And I think it's useful to discuss with uh, Americans, because you know I'm going to get some tweets to say you're such a Bar Bernie bro, you got Bernie on again, all this kind of stuff. Where I come from in Canada, this is not actually a, a political position. You, you can be a conservative and like single-payer health care. You can be a liberal and like single-payer health care. It's just a better return on investment, which is why uh, all but three of all the, the most developed countries in the world have it. Only Turkey, Mexico, Ali. and the United States don't have some version you know, of covering everybody. It may not be single-payer, but it's universal. For many years in Canada, you had conservative governments, right? I mean, that's the yes, fact. Right. They had a conservative government. They didn't say, now we're in power, we're going to move to an American style healthcare system. They would have been thrown out of office in five minutes. You go to Europe. Conservative right. parties, all of them, understand healthcare is a human right. They do argue about their healthcare system. But throughout Europe, nobody denies that every man, woman, and child in those countries are entitled to healthcare. We are the major exception in the world. And the result of that is. For ordinary people, it's not only that they're uninsured or underinsured. They go to the doctor and they find out they thought they were covered, they're not covered. They have to pay out of pocket. Half a million people go bankrupt because of medically related bills. People go crazy filling out forms. Doctors are sick and tired of having to pay attention to the insurance companies rather than their patients. This system is dysfunctional. It is cruel. It is wasteful. We have got to join the rest of the world move toward a Medicare for all type program. So Donald Trump gets off the helicopter, records a video in which he said, don't let this dominate your life. I think you and I would both agree with the president. Wouldn't we love a situation in which getting ill doesn't dominate your life? But in our employer tied healthcare system in the United States, unfortunately, getting ill for the majority of Americans, less ill than COVID, by the way, will dominate your life. Ali, you know, in running for president, 
I was all over this country and we held dozens and dozens of town meetings and the stories that people told would break your heart. I mean, literally people started crying. How they lost loved ones because they didn't get to a doctor on time. How people suffered and died because they could not afford the outrageously high cost of prescription drugs. And by the way, uh, just in terms of insulin, we pay something like 10 times more for insulin than the Canadians do and people around uh, the world. You have millions of people today, people watching this program right now are stuck on a job. They're stuck on a job that they don't want to be because they're de getting decent health care for their families. They would rather do something else. They can't do that. So, uh, yeah, the lack of health care in our current health care system impacts virtually every single one of us. Again, not to mention the 60,000 families who lose loved ones every year because people can't afford to get to a doctor on time. So right. let me just repeat this. For that, the without a pandemic. Time. Let me just say this for the umpteenth time. What I am talking about, what Ali is talking about, is not radical. It exists all over the bloody world. What we are doing is yep. radical. What we are saying is you don't have health insurance because you have a bad job. That is crazy stuff. So I got whiplash because uh, earlier this week, the president uh, tweeted out in all caps about how there's not going to be a stimulus bill before the election. I didn't understand what that meant. Is that meant to say either is that to hold people hostage that if you vote for me, uh, that I'll give you a stimulus bill? Because if Joe Biden comes into office, there will be a stimulus bill. Then uh, Mnuchin and, and uh, Nancy Pelosi seem to have come to an agreement on a one point eight trillion dollar bill, which is quite close to what the, the heroes bill that the House passed uh, was looking like. Where are you on this? And where do you think it's going to get look I mean, you know i'm when i go on <clears throat> when i go on media the commentators say, well what do you think of what trump said and i usually say well i think nothing because he's probably going to change his mind in 14 seconds and that's exactly what happened here he was for the stimulus he's against it what is the latest news he's for it in five minutes he may be against it but here's the bottom line in america today we got millions and millions of people who are really hurting and we don't talk about this enough alley. These are people who don't have any health insurance. These are people who have no income. These are people worried about being evicted, people who are worried about feeding their children. Of course, the federal government has got to act. Over four months ago, the House did the right thing over a $3 trillion bill, which among other things would have continued that $600 supplement to people's unemployment. And that is what we have got to do. That is so important for so many people, not to mention continuing that $1,200 a month check that people need. I think, well, to make a long story short, we have got to address the economic crisis facing millions of working families. What do you make of the fact that in the last two debates and whenever uh, Donald Trump speaks or Mike Pence speaks, they are really attempting to draw a, a wedge between you and Joe Biden, uh, either painting Joe Biden as having capitulated to your views or the fact that your supporters won't vote for him. You're out there fairly actively campaigning right now. But what's your message to folks who think that them, there's some sort of split in the Democratic Party right now? Look, it's no great secret that Joe Biden and I uh, have our differences of opinion. But there's also should be no difference of opinion that Joe's proposals are pretty significant. And if adopted, raising the minimum wage to $15 an hour, lowering the eligibility age for Medicare from 65 down to 60, investing $2 trillion in transforming our energy system away from fossil fuel to combat climate change, they're pretty strong. But after the election, after Joe wins, we will have our arguments. That's called democracy. But right now, we are in a united front. And that means, and, and it, it's not just you know Joe and me. What it is, is you got a lot of Republicans out there, you got a lot of moderates out there, you got conservatives out there who's saying that the most important point of this election, it's not health care, it's not education, it's not climate change. It is whether or not we retain our democratic foundation. You got a president and a party right now who are doing everything they can to suppress the vote, to make it harder for people to vote. You have a party out there which is trying to intimidate people as they come to the polling booths. And you've got a party out there where the president and vice president are saying, well, maybe we, if we lose the election, uh, we're not prepared to lose office. So I would say out there to the people who don't agree with me on everything, that's fine. That's a democracy. You have a right to your views. I have a right to my views. But we have got to stand together, progressives, moderates, conservatives, to say that this is a democratic society. 
And when Trump loses, if he does lose the election, polls indicate that he will, that he will leave office like every other candidate who has lost a president who has lost an election. Bernie Sanders, good to see you. Thank you for joining me, Senator Bernie Sanders of Vermont. Well, she's going to continue after a quick break, but there's one more viewer email that I think the president needs to hear. This week he told Americans not to let COVID-19 dominate their lives. Here's how viewer Kimberly Baker of Phoenix, Arizona responded. She writes in part, I had COVID-19 in early February. I have what is generally called COVID brain. I struggle daily with basic tasks I previously took for granted, like the ability to communicate coherently in writing or speaking. I can't remember words or concepts sometimes. I find myself in the middle of a task, suddenly unable to remember what I'm supposed to be doing. She adds, my father has late stage congestive heart failure. Due to his high vulnerability, I haven't been able to see him or visit him in the hospital since January. I may never hug him again, and he's my only living family member.